Bike chain slipped off on my way to work today. When I left work 9 hours later my chain was back on good as new. Reddit what random act of kindness has completely turned your day around? When I was a kid, like 5-6 years old. I was bicycling with my mom. We were going downhill. And at the end of the road there was a crossing road, T-cross. For some reason I panicked. Took my feet of the pedals. And accelerated towards the crossing road and I started to scream at the top of my lungs. In a matter of seconds. A guy sprints out of his front lawn and grabs me off my bike. Probably saving my life. My mom thanked him. And for some reason I believed the guy was Jesus for most of my childhood, non-Christian though. The day my daughter was born my water broke around noon and of course our pose car chose a moment not to start. We had just moved into this little trailer park about 5 miles out of town so we were on our own. The neighbor two doors down. A scruffy. Bearded. Tattooed. Holly riding biker. Saw my husband panicking and moseyed down the drive to see what was up. This angel loaned two people he didn't even know his car to get to the hospital and sometime later brought the keys to our car to the reception desk. He had replaced the alternator and brought the car to the hospital so we would have a way home. Never judge a book by its cover and all that. He looked like the stereotypical scary biker dude but was really a great guy. I have several stories. In high school. My boyfriend, at the time, and I had the same class together and one day. He broke up with me. In the middle of class. I went to the bathroom because I couldn't fight back the tears any longer. Some girl I didn't know. Came in and asked me why I was crying. After I told her. She gave me a hug and told me. You're too pretty to cry and proceeded to tell me about her bad hair day to cheer me up. One night in college I was pulling an all nighter in the study lounge. And by 6 a.m. The sun was starting to rise. Some guy that came by earlier to meet new people. Came by again and gave me a bottle 5 hours energy. He noticed I was getting exhausted and hoped it would help me the rest of the day. I'm a cashier and some customers can usually tell when I'm exhausted or having a rough day. Even through my tone of voice and smile. Those that do notice usually compliment me on how well I do my job. Compliment me on my appearance. Or attempt to make me laugh. I once ran out of gas while pulling into a gas station. The entrance was a slight hill and my jeep simply died. I immediately panicked because I was blocking an entrance and I'm a small girl so pushing a jeep wrangler would be a task. A guy parked at the closest pump saw me and came over to help. The power steering is gone when the car is dead so it was near impossible for me to steer. He made his three sons get out and help him push it to a pump for me. I thanked him profusely and I'm not sure what I would have done without their help. Similarly, I was behind a woman in line at a gas station recently and she was putting $1.47 in gas in her car. That is less than half of a gallon and would do virtually nothing so I gave her $10 to put into her tank as well. Her smile made me pretty happy. Today I was on campus feeling like shit eating a slice of pizza during a break. And I hear. Hey. I look up and a cute female is walking towards me. She says. I like your mustache and flashes a tiny smile. As soon as I could smile back and say. Thank you. She had passed and disappeared into the crowd of people walking by. One random compliment from a complete stranger can do wonders. A guy I used to teach with lost his mum suddenly a few years back. He was a reception teacher. So the kids he worked with were 4 and 5 years old. He'd explained to the children that he'd had some very sad news and that he might be a little quiet. One afternoon. It all got a bit much and he couldn't quite find his feet. One of the little girls saw that he was struggling, bless her. She was a sharp little thing. Marched to the front of the classroom. Picked up a storybook and just started reading it aloud. It took ages. But she read the whole book. And had the whole of the rest of the class listening to it on the carpet by the end. After that. He felt able to face the world again. And she was super proud that she read a story to everybody. I was having a shit day. Tanked a job interview and went through a Starbucks drive through to get to coffee. As I pulled up to the window I couldn't find my wallet. 
I was searching frantically through my bag and cupboard alas. It was nowhere to be found. Thoroughly embarrassed. I pulled up to the window and told the woman that I must have forgotten my wallet and apologized. I offered to go home and come back and pay for the drink that they had already made that I assumed would have been wasted. She smiled and reached the coffee into my window and said this one's on me. Have a good rest of your day. For some reason her kindness totally caught me off guard. I thanked her profusely and drove off. I may or may not have teared up a little. It had been a bad day. I had just broken up with my live-in boyfriend, well. He broke up with M.E. And had just gotten my own apartment in the town I moved to to be with him. After spending the past couple weeks on couches. I was in Marshalls. And had purchased a new piece of furniture. My first living room chair. It was a fucking awesome chair. I walked in. Saw it. And had to have it. So I take my newly acquired chair out to my car. I fold down the seats of my former Jetta. It does not fit. Fuck. Every way I turn it. Every door I put it through. The chair just will not go. I'm trying everything possible and every fucking angle just to get my beloved chair in my car and bring it back to my house and have my first piece of my own furniture. Nothing worked. People walked by and chuckled. And joked having trouble. Clearly. So then a car pulls up next to me. A young couple gets out. Maybe a little older than I am. 23. But still young. Together. We were able to maneuver the chair in such a way that it got into the car. I don't know what I would have done had they not helped me. The thought of going in. Defeated. To return the awesome chair I just purchased with such pride pained me. I love that chair. I'm gonna go sit in it. When my father passed away. A few of my friends went to great lengths to put together a benefit show for my family. My dad was our primary source of income. So we had fallen on hard times financially and had to prepare to sell the house. It was incredible to see all of these young punks. Many of whom I didn't know. Give what little they had to help my family out because we were going through hell. This will probably get buried. Held open a restaurant door for an elderly woman in a wheelchair. Her family was right behind her and I was assuming someone would take the door from me. I didn't want to be a dick and let it go in their faces. They all walked right past me and didn't even acknowledge me. A simple thank you would have been more than sufficient. After the last person I walked up to the host to be seated. He said I saw what you did. I want you to have a free appetizer. Mind you. This was a pretty upscale place and those things are cheap. So I was riding my motorbike cross country and back. Soul searching. I now think epiphanies become greater with greater hindsight. Or something. And in Indiana I ran out of gas. After pushing, mostly uphill, for about a mile and a half. In 100-ish heat. I coasted into a station. While basking in the glorious air conditioning. This guy in casual business attire asked me. Was that you pushing your bike from the off-ramp? What did you run out of gas? To which I breathlessly replied. Yup. Double quote. I bet you don't let that happen again. Double quote. Yeah. Thanks for the help. Cock. Double quote. I apologized profusely to the ladies working the registers for my candor after he left in a huff. They were gracious and told me to stay and cool off for a bit. I used to work as a cashier at a local supermarket. This supermarket was located downtown. So most of our customers would be either alcoholics, drug addicts, elderly people or students, however. The two latter ones were, unfortunately, not as frequent as the alcoholics and the drug addicts. During a regular shift, a pretty burly guy comes over and asks me to take care of his bag whilst he's shopping, so I'm sure he doesn't steal anything. This was a nice gesture. However, the thing that really made my day was when he came back and offered me some of his Viagra. Some people could really learn from that. I remember my freshman quarter at Cal Poly. I was dealing with a lot of loneliness and depression. Just not having a good time of it at all. I remember one bad night. I drove to the local Safeway to grab some food. I had been crying earlier. Looked terrible. And was just an all around mess. 
the checkout lady asked if I had one of those discount cards. And mentioned it would save me 3 or 4 dollars on my purchases. I shook my head. Prepared to pay full price. After a quick glance at me. I think she realized I was having a bad day. And swiped in a card code real quick. That little discount was the most trivial act of kindness I can ever remember getting. But it meant so much to me. After a long time of feeling alone. I noticed. And cared for. To feel like one person gave a fuck. I got back to the truck and just sat. Crying. Because the nice gesture was the most kindness that I had seen in a while. It turned my day around. And brightened me up quite a lot. I know I've had other random acts of kindness happen to me. But this one stuck in my mind as the top one. TL. DR checkout lady gave me the club card price. I was in Glasgow and needed cash for the underground. The cash machine was out of order and I was running late for my train to London. I asked a passerby if she knew where another cash point was. She said the nearest one was about a 10 minute walk away. I was getting a bit flustered as it was looking like I would miss the last train of the night and said as much to her. She said that if I just needed a couple of quid for the tube then here you go and gave me the cash in the process blowing at least two Scottish stereotypes out of the water and making my day. I bicycle pretty much everywhere I go because I can't afford to have a car, and doesn't want one. Most of the time I'm well prepared for the occasional downpour that the Danish climate offers. But yesterday it totally took me by surprise. I'd already gotten up late and was late for work but as I left my home the weather was okay. Not pouring down like it was 5 minutes later. So I'd gotten on my bike and driven to work. But as I said. It had caught me by surprise on the way and I was completely soaked when I got to work. Needless to say. I was a pretty sore sight and it immediately got the attention of my co-workers. Before I could even make it to the bathroom to try and dry off a co-worker came to me with a towel. Another came with a spare set of socks and pants which he'd bought the day before and a third had taken off his pullover so I could use it. If that wasn't enough. The secretary took my wet clothes and drove home to put it in the dryer since she lived right around the corner. The sheer generosity and coordination by them shook me. A damn shame it's just an internship and I can't stick around. I love this place. It's been a rough quarter in nursing school for me. I'm working through some intense grief from losing my grandfather who I was very close with. Among other life happens type things. And I've had a tough time finding my groove again this quarter. It's left me with a pretty significant confidence crisis unfortunately. Today I was working with a nurse in the ER4 clinical. And at the end of the day I found her and thanked her for all the learning opportunities she allowed me to participate in. And she gave me some pretty genuine compliments. She said I had done really well. She really liked how thoroughly I looked into any medications I wasn't familiar with before giving them to my patients. Etc. They were very basic compliments. But it was exactly what I needed right now. I nearly cried on the way home because I was so thankful someone took the time to say some kind words to me. I once had a farewell on the platform of the train station. I was leaving to go back home and my girlfriend was going to Australia for a year. It was sad. I sat on the train. Waved to her through the glass and the train set off. No surprises came on shuffle and off I went. Ticket chap rolls up. Realize I left my ticket at her house. So I mumbled through the tears I'd have to buy one as I couldn't find my return. Sheffield to Bristol was about you acute 70 you acute 80. Absolutely gutted. He said don't worry about it mate. Looks like you've had a shit enough day already. Cheers ticket man. It didn't turn my day around but it sure helped. XX. I was fishing at the beach a few years ago. In a spot where many people fish, a jetty. I had been there all day. As had an old man who was right next to me, and he had been catching stripers and flounder all day. I wasn't catching anything. Despite all of my time and effort. The man turned to me and said. Hey. You've had really shitty luck lately. Try these. He handed me a small cup filled with sea worms that he dug out of the mud the night before. I offered him a cold coke in return. But he said I'm not taking that. I want to help a fisherman with more time left than me. 
I'm 88 years old. And I think I'm about done with fishing. I want you to have these. He gave me his fishing pole, which was clearly at least 60 years old. Tackle box, filled with all kinds of fishing lures and other goodies. And half of the fish he had caught. I began to tear up. And he just looked at me. And gave me a well-worn business card that was blank except for the words we all have a purpose. I plan on passing it all on just as he had done. Not me but my sister. During the financial crisis back in 2008 my sister had taken maternity leave from a local factory for the birth of her second son. But when she went to return to work, her job wasn't there anymore and Christmas was two weeks away. So she went into Kmart to cancel a few gifts she had put on layaway and the cashier came back with all of them and told her they had been paid for already. An anonymous stranger paid for one thousands of dollars worth of Christmas gifts that several parents had put on layaway and my sister was lucky enough to be one of those people. That's one of the nicest random acts of kindness that I've ever witnessed. This year on behalf of my sister who never really got back on her feet after losing that job. I plan on going to a store that has layaway and paying for as many kids toys as I can afford. Missed a flight coming from Hungary to Norway due to being up all night partying and forgetting to adjust my watch due to time zone differences. Booked a second one. Missed my flight from Norway to Stockholm because the guy in Hungary told me I had to collect my bags. And there were no audible speakers for me to hear the announcements in the luggage area. I got in line to speak to the customer service rep. I was pretty relaxed about the whole thing even though it was going to cost me a lot to get a flight early the next day to get to work. Shit happens. Right? Dot. She had just finished dealing with a particularly abusive customer and I was next. So I had a laugh. Explained what happened the whole day and when she told me I had to rebook I just nodded and smiled and said oh well. Serves me right etc etc. I walked away to check some stuff before coming back to make the rebooking. And as I walk away she calls me back and says well I can see that your incoming flight was a few minutes late. So we can offer you a free we're booking and a hotel for the night if that works for you. With a glint in her eye. Of course they had no need to do it at all. But she milked the system a bit to help me out. Amazing what happens when you maintain a positive attitude in the face of cavernous walls of bullshit. TL. DR. Airline staff at the airport gave me a free hotel and flight for being nice to them. I'm a bartender. And I get some amount of abuse from customers sometimes. If I spill their drink. I replace it. But if they spill their drink. They have to pay for it regardless. People get really pissed off when they find out that basically throwing their drink over the bar means they need to pay anyway. This happens quite a bit. And really pisses me off. One night I was on last week and the place was pretty busy. Customers are getting really noisy and drunk, surprise, and a girl walks up to the bar and asks for just her water. I grab one and hand her it and she says oh. Thanks gorgeous. With a big genuine smile, made my night. Formatting. As an extra thank you for the persons involved. I will share mine. Due to increase of migraine attacks I got the chance to finally visit the hospital for a specialist. So let me picture the context. I biked 220 kilometers in 2 days, first day 170. The rest the second day, and on the second day I had to take the train back home to be in time for the appointment in the hospital. So. Being suited up in bike gear. Muscles that hurted and joined by my recumbent bike. I arrived at my home city with 30 minutes left. While arriving at the hospital I found out that I did not have a bike lock with me. And. Unfortunately. I would not leave my recumbent bike out in the open in the middle of the city. I asked around in the hospital to put my bike somewhere and literally nobody even cared. Nothing. Yes. We have our employee bike shed. But yeah. You are not an employee and that sort of dollar sign. So I decided to bike around and knocked on some health insurance office. Totally sweaty. Stressed and asked explained the guy that the hospital was being really hard on me. He said of course come in. I stalled my bike and ran to the hospital totally relieved and made it at my appointment. Funny fact I was explained later is that they had an ex-employee that put his bike in their garden for one. Five years. 
that ex-employee picked up his bike two days before I came around. Imagine their thoughts that I came around and asked to put a bike in their garden. Again. Two months later I came over again and gave some sweets for the whole office. And sure they remembered the recumbent bike guy. Second kindness. Doing hitchhikers a tease present on my 21st birthday during winter and being stuck on a gas station in the middle of nowhere and got a fair and 2xxl coffee from a guayu who said that we could use something hot. Comma shouted at him that it was my BD and I think I made his day by saying that out loud. I was out for a night of clubbing in Gangnam yes. Like the song. And I was beyond wasted drunk. I was wearing my favorite cute sandals and was dancing like a maniac. One sandal snapped. I said F it. I'm going to keep dancing with one shoe on. Then the other one snapped. I danced for another hour and finally decided to go to the quick shop outside the club and glue them back together somehow. South Korea is filthy. There are no trash cans and garbage is everywhere until early morning cleanup. People spit and vomit and sometime piss in the streets freely. My feet and ankles are black. I get super glue and spill it all over my shoes and feet. But they were fixed. I continued to dance they busted again but luckily they were super glued to the skin of my feet. Eventually. The glue wore off so I threw my shoes in my purse. Drank more and danced. I realized I had no money left for a cab ride home when I went back to the quick shop for more glue. I said this aloud and another foreigner handed me $8 to get home. I was bombed so I took it and thanked her graciously. As I stumbled through the black streets of Gangnam without any shoes on. A random young Korean woman runs up to me and hands me a new pair of plastic sandals. For free. I was on cloud 9. So. My drunk. Filthy. Brokas took a nice taxi home grinning like a fool. I was on the way to the gym with my wife. She was giving me an attitude and being argumentative over something I thought was no big deal. I was not in the best mood. We stopped at the gas station to grab a water. But once my water was scanned I realized I didn't have my money on me. The guy behind me offered to pay for it. It was only a $1 but I was really appreciative. My own wife is giving me a hard time making my life difficult and this complete stranger does something completely awesome. It brightened up my day and reminded me that there are genuinely kind people out there. I once was sitting in a train without a ticket. I'm not sure anymore whether I forgot to buy one or I simply was too lazy to buy it. Of course. I was checked by two conductors. And one of them wrote me a fine of 50 euros, about 65 dollars. Fines are crazy in the Netherlands. I had no money at all at that time. So this was a serious problem for me. I was sitting and thinking how fucked my life was. When the conductor that wrote me the fine came back and said. I've tid your fine apart. It's Ramadan and I try to do a good dead every day. So this one is for you. Have a nice day. Made me feel extremely good about humanity in general. It wasn't just a day. But the days counting down to an international move. I had to sell a car fast. I was living in a state with no friends and barely any friends to help me out. Plus my husband was already overseas. But a patron in the bar I worked at, I was the regular bartender at the time, there most of the week, overheard my predicament. He ended up making a phone call to a car dealer friend of his. The next day I'm driving the car over to the dealership. Less than a week later I'm finishing up the sale because they sold my car. They expected no money. No commission. Nothing. I later sent a pretty sweet gift basket to the dealership and bought my bar patron lunch plus quite a few rounds at the bar. They really saved my ass. My freshman year of college. I was hanging out in my room when I realized that I had put a load of laundry in the dryer hours ago. We had so few washers and dryers in my dorm because of the relatively small number of people at my school. But it was still a laundry room for around 200 people and there was usually some kind of vigilantly justice that went on with regard to scumbags like myself who hog the washing facilities. So anyway. I basically leapt down three flights of stairs to get down to the laundry room and when I arrived all of my laundry was neatly folded on a clean counter. My roommate said I had good laundry karma. As she had recently had to dig her laundry out of the trash for doing the same. 
Two years ago I was pulling my trailer through a small town, Marlette, in the thumb area of Michigan. As I crossed the RR tracks one of the shackles broke causing the leaf springs to scatter and flatten the tire on it. A guy who lived across the road started helping me pick up the pieces and let me put it in his driveway for the weekend until I could get back to repair it. When I came back two days later he had already repaired the shackle and put a used tire on it for me. Unfortunately. He was gone when I came to pick it up so I left $20 all I had at the time with his super nice neighbor who promised that he would make sure the guy got it. Thanks Corey. On the flip side I worked as a service manager at a small town in Michigan. Shout out to Bad Axe. Comma and two couples pull up with steam coming out of the hood. They are kind stranded since it's late Saturday afternoon and all the parts stores are closed. I locate a hole in the upper radiator hose and pull out a tool I just bought the day before. Recut the hose and reconnect it. No charge. It was an easy fix that completely saved their day. A week later I get called into the boss's office and he hand me a letter. Handwritten. Praising me for helping them out in a huge time of need. TL. DR got a corporate pat on the back for a 5 minute fix. It was another Valentine's Day spent single. And also my first year away from home at university. So I didn't have my family to spend time with and distract me. All of my friends either had plans with their souls or were too busy to hang out. I was struggling with midterms and several very difficult classes. I missed my family. And I was very lonely. I was starting to hate college. Not a great day. Then I get a package in the mail. It's from a friend of my mom's I met once at a new year's party and talked to for a couple of hours. She doesn't have any daughters of her own and we got along very well. But I never really spoke to her again. When I open the package. Inside is a gorgeous long grey pearl necklace with a note every girl deserves a valentine. And no one deserves this more than an independent. Hard working. Beautiful girl like you. I still cry every time I wear it or even think about it. No one has ever been that sweet to me or done something so thoughtful for me like that. With no obligations whatsoever. I want to do this for someone else someday. I was supposed to meet a group to work on a project on a school holiday. We all previously agreed that this date would be the best time. Despite cancelled classes. But nobody showed up but me. A lot had already been stewing in my head. Boyfriend's house had just been foreclosed on. Relationship was on the rocks. Work and school were overwhelming. And just general daily shit. Our designated meeting space was an area behind one of our academic buildings where there are some vending machines. Seats. Etc. Anyway. I'm sitting alone. Feeling pissed and dejected and I probably looked as miserable as I felt. Then walked by one of the cafeteria staff. This guy was really tall. Tough. And, as rumor had it, recently released from jail. He made a beeline straight to the vending machine and on his way back. He stopped and looked at me and brought me the soda, strawberry Fanta? Comma he just bought and said. Hey. Looks like you need this. I thanked him and told him that he didn't have to give me his soda. But he smiled and just left. It was an unexpected gesture that really picked up my spirits that afternoon. I left my iPhone in a nick cab. Thought it was gone for good. But when I went to work the next day one of my co-workers handed it to me. It turns out that the lady who got into the car after me called one of my recent contacts. A security guard from my job. Who had one of the other security guards with a car drive him all the way to the other side of the city, after work and the opposite that they were headed, to get it for me. And to top it all off they refused to take any money for their trouble. Although I ended up putting it into an envelope and having the receptionist give it to them when I wasn't there so they couldn't say no. Close bracket. I have had some great encounters. From free coffee to someone buying me a meal because I had left my wallet at home. I always carry those experiences with me and try to pay it forward when the opportunity arises. For example. A couple months ago I was standing in line at the grocery store and heard the woman in front of me exclaim that she had just had a horrible day. She looked tired and stressed. Then to make it worse. She didn't have enough cash for her groceries and her card was being declined. 
She asked if they would hold on to her groceries so she could go home and try to get another card. She looked like she was going to break down and I told her I would happily get her grocery bill. At first she seemed unsure and I just told her it wasn't a big deal and that if she really wanted to thank me. Just pass it along to someone next time. I hope she has made other people's day just that much better. Colon. Capital D. Me and my bro were on our way to church in the morning on a bad snow day. The highways were barely plowed and it was still coming down. My brother, driver, was on the highway and before we knew it. We fishtailed and crashed our front end of the car into the guardrail. Both our lights were out. We were facing against traffic. My brother was digging for his phone in panic and I was shell-shocked. Keep in mind. It's dark and foggy out. So since our lights were out. Anyone could have slid toward us and we would have died in a head-on collision. Then. Some random guy in a white truck parked in front of us and he got out to check on us. He then lit flares in front and behind us. As the police came to help me and my brother. The guy who lit the flares disappeared. If it weren't for the flares and the guy helping us contact the police. We probably wouldn't be here. We never got the chance to thank him. Nor did we know his name. To this day. I wish I could properly thank him. This happened 7 years ago.